This is Hope Haven, and it very much is a haven of hope for single parent families. And it is completely flooded out right now. There are actually multiple cars stuck in there. The water is up to the windows. One key ingredient to stay safe from the sun is sunscreen, and folks can find sunscreen stations like this all throughout the park. Now let me tell you, after walking through, I don't see why anyone wouldn't want to live here. The home is absolutely gorgeous. The fire started right here off the frontage road around 3.30 this afternoon, and then it started moving east. This waiting room is empty now, but within a month, that will definitely not be the case. This area behind me is the next project for the New Mexico Christian Children's Home. The plan, a brand new state-of-the-art playground, basketball court and picnic area. To live a fit lifestyle, medical professionals recommend moderate to vigorous exercise five times a week. Firefighters were using engines and heavy machinery to create these containment lines while the fire made its way through this field. Perhaps the biggest issue folks have here in the desert is staying hydrated. So new this year, folks will find water stations like this where they can fill their water bottle before and after a hike. If the cloud gets high enough and there's enough moisture in the air, it could rain or even snow inside the fire zone. Probably the worst one was going to be the semi truck that wrecked in the towards the end part of June. Um, the impact from the wreck rattled our whole house. Kristen tells me it's gotten to the point where she keeps her phone, a pair of shoes, and a jacket next to the bed. God forbid there's, you know, any kind of noise outside that we have to go run to. I'm ready to call 911 and we're ready to go assist. Many involved in the wrecks didn't realize Hollywood ended before it was too late. There have been times for even myself or my husband when we're coming home and the snow is heavy or the rain is heavy or fog. Even with those warning signs, if you don't know that they're there, if you're not from here, you're not seeing it because the visibility is bad. If drivers don't hit the brakes in time, they can slide off the road and into a ditch, which is currently filled with water. In the most recent wreck, the pickup actually hit the bank, went airborne, and ended up on the other side. So definitely poor visibility. Um, due to weather and lighting, I think has been a huge reason why. There have been no fatalities, but the chance of one is what drove Kristen to reach out to Randall County and TxDOT. But what our Traffic Safety Review Committee does on a regular basis is take a look at these concerns that are brought to our attention and see what, if anything, can be done and what the best option is. TxDOT hopes to make improvements to the intersection beginning tomorrow. We are going to be putting in rumble strips. Those are on order and we are relocating the stop sign so that it's more in line with the driver's viewpoint. Senior Airman Wilson is a driver operator with the fire department. The primary job is to safely and effectively get to wherever the incident is. He always knew he wanted to be a firefighter and the Air Force helped him reach that dream. Coming into the Air Force gives me a really quick opportunity to not only do the job that I love, but I can travel and do the job as well. Originally from Orlando, Florida, Wilson has been stationed at Cannon for almost two years. I love the family feel of the community. But it took getting involved to find that. I encourage people now that come to the base to kind of like find their, find their niche and find what they like to do and reach out to the community because they'll reach right back even farther than you reach. Wilson started off with annual volunteer events through the department and now he's heavily involved at his church where he is a drum lead, helps teach upcoming drummers, and leads a small group every other Sunday for high school students. And that's not all. I'm in an EMT class online right now, and I do ride-alongs with Clovis Fire Department on, um, on my off days sometimes. Wilson says the relationship with Cannon and surrounding area first responders is special. It means a lot to us to have them help us, and um, we can provide any help that they need. It's um, really, really beneficial and special to both of us. According to Wilson, his life in Canon is a progression, something he encourages for all airmen. Progression is really huge. It's a really underrated word for, for being here. Um, if, you, if you constantly progress and constantly keep going, you're pursuing that constant development in yourself. Alan Votaw and his two brothers arrived at Cal Farley's Boys Ranch in 1957. We thought this was going to be a home. It turned into a torture chamber. I was four years old and for 10 years, molested, beaten. At tonight's protest, Alan held a sign with a picture on it. It's of his two brothers and three friends, 
but not him. He says it's because he was too black and blue from being beaten. I said, nobody's going to ever beat me again. And nobody's ever beat me again. It caused me problems in life, but I overcome them problems because I wasn't going to let them beat me down. It's my turn to beat them down. Allen tells me the abuse still haunts him. He says the scars claimed the lives of his two brothers. It was after we left there, but it mentally messed with us. It totally mentally messed with us. Holding up a banner with Allen was Cynthia Scott, an English teacher at Boys Ranch from 84 to 86. I'm here from a broken heart today. She learned of the horrors some of her students endured about a year ago. Um, currently, Boys Ranch on their website advertises that we offer hope to hurting children. But for most of their history, they've offered hurt to hoping children. Former students told her they felt there was no way out. It was like a Hunger Games, like a Hunger Games-like existence for them out there. Giving a voice to the numerous survivors dating from the 1950s through the 2010s is why Steve Smith, a survivor himself, is protesting. We're trying to help survivors. We've got to help them. I hope everybody calls in and ask how far these boys ranch. Dan Adams and the board of directors to do the right thing.